Hi, welcome back. This is Jim again. Uh, I know you're probably impatient to find out how we're going to actually make this bug move if we're not going to use the um, uh, built-in move command. The answer is we're going to make our own move command, and we're going to make our own to make our own move command. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, use uh, a different command, which is the set location, which puts the sprite at a particular location. So let's start, let's make our own move command. So um, I'm going to do, uh, so I'm going to do private, so it's going to make a private method that can only be called by this sprite. Uh, it will uh, be void, it's not going to return anything, it's just going to move the sprite, and I'll call this move player. I'll just call it something different from just move because move already means something. We don't want to, let's try not, let's not confuse green. You can actually uh, completely change what the move command does, but I'm going to make my a separate move command. I'll just call it something different right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the set location command. So the set location command actually puts you in a particular place. So I'm going to, so, and uh, it's going to give you a particular X and Y coordinate. So let's look at what the X, how the X and Y coordinates work, right? So there's the X zero zero is up here, right? Um, so this is X is zero, Y is zero. This is X is 400. So X increases from, I mean, sorry, 600. X increases from zero to 600 all the way over here. You might be wondering where does the 600 come from? If I look at my green world here, you can see here that uh, this is, when we create the world, we put the X and the Y coordinate uh, at the very beginning. And uh, I'll explain what the one means later. That's not important right now. So we have a width world with a width of 600. And let, let me show you just how that's going to work here, right, for this bug, right? So I'll do, uh, let's say, set location. Uh, let's say I want to move to the upper left-hand corner of the screen. So let's try 0, comma, 0. So this means the set location to X is 0, Y is 0, right? And uh, I'm going to show you something cool we can do. We can actually call a method on uh, the uh, on the bug. Actually, uh, to do that, I'm going to have to make this public to call it on the bug because we're calling it from outside the method. So right now, I'll make it public. So if I click on here, notice I can do move player, and it's it moves it moves me up to um, uh, it it moves me up to the upper left hand corner, right? And uh, so we can do this, right? Um, if I can do, uh, let's say, set location. Let's say I wanted to. What if I move to the, so the x, so the x, the maximum x is 600 and the maximum y is 400. Let's look what happens there. And uh, if I move there, that's going to move me down there, right? Look at that, right? So, but we want to. What we want to do is, is we want to. Uh, we're going to change our current. Uh, location from where it is right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, set our, we're going to change our location from where we are, are right now. So let's first, let's get where we are right now, right? And we can get where we are right now by saying, um, we'll say um, uh, int um, x current x equals get x and current int current y equals get y. So uh, so now we say, let's say if we change our set location, current x comma current y. Where's that going to set me? What do you think that's going to do? That's going to, if I, um, if I do that, that's going to put me exactly where I was before. Well, that's kind of useless, right? That's uh, just gives just me right back to where I was before. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to change our x and change our y. So let's say I want to move right. So uh, let's make a change x coordinate and a change y coordinate. So I'll say int change x equals, uh, well, so let's, uh, actually, I'm going to, before I do this, I'm just going to, um, I'm going to make a speed variable because I'd, I'd like to have, I, I don't really know how fast I want my bug to go, but I'd, I'd like to be able to um, uh, just change it by changing a single number. Um, again, notice how every time and I try and instead of hard coding something into my code, I try and set it in advance so it's all ready to go. So I'm going to say int speed equals 2. I'll say my bug has a speed of 2 right now. So I'm going to say int change x equals 2 and int change y equals zero. I have to add my change x and my change y. So I'll say current x plus change x and current y plus change y. So see how that works. 
um, notice it moves me a little bit to the right, right? So if, if I wanted to move up, right, I could change my x to zero. If I wanted to move up, so if I make, make this minus, oh, I, speed, right? Sorry, I, I put two there. I should just be putting speed. I should be using my variable, right? So uh, if I um, move, now it's going to move me up just a little bit, right? Two up. Uh, and so if I change uh, positive speed, right, it's going to move me down just a little, right? So, but, but what we need to do is we need to make our speed depend on what direction we're going, right? So, I mean, we need to make our, what, what our change X and R and change Y are depend on what direction we're going. So first of all, let's figure out what direction we're going, right? So I'm going to say um, int um, direction equals, and there's a get rotation command. Uh, get rotation, that means we're going to get what direction we're going. So I'm going to make a method, a separate method, that's going to get what um, the, the that's going to get the direction that we're pointing, right? Um, and, and it's going to get what I mean. It's going to get the change x and change y for the direction we're pointing. So first, I'm going to get the change x. I'm, I'm going to have to get each one separately because they're two different numbers. Um, there would be a way to get both at the same time, but that would involve some lists and other things that I don't want to deal with right now. So I'm going to uh, make a private method. And uh, I'm going to make it public just so we can try it right now. All of these are going to become private, um, but I'm going to make it public just so we can uh, test it from outside. So I'm going to say void git change x. And um, it's going to depend on the rotation, so um, or the direction in this case. The direction and rotation are basically the same thing. I just gave it a different name so I wouldn't uh, uh, mix up Greenfoot with the namespaces. So, and so what's going to happen? Well, let's think about that, right? Well, let's think for a sec. If my if I'm facing right, my x is going to increase. If I'm facing left, my x is going to decrease. So what we'll do is we'll say if direction equals, and we want direction dot right. Then we're going to return whatever the speed is, and it's going to be positive, right? So we're just going to return, so our change x, if we're facing right, our change x will be 2. Oh, look at that, I put void. This should say int because we're returning an integer variable, so that's a mistake. Um, it gave me an error because I said this was void, which was not returning anything. I should have said int, which is an integer variable, which means it is returning an integer. Um, but we're still going to have an error. It's still complaining because it's missing return statement. And you're like, wait a minute, the return statement's right there. Well, yeah, that's fine if we're facing right, but it needs to know what's going to happen if we're facing any other direction. Now, it's important to remember here, when I return speed, my function's over, right? So if I'm facing right, I, nothing else in here, this function is going to happen. So I can put another if statement. You might normally think I should have an else if statement, but I don't need an else if statement because if the if I was facing right, uh, this 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 function's over. So I, I can just put a completely separate if statement here. We want to know what's going to happen if we're facing left. So then what we're going to do is return negative speed. And right, and so this is going to be, so if we're facing left, we're going to, so if we're facing right, we're going to return positive 2. If we're facing left, we're going to return negative 2. Um, and notice it's still not happy because it's saying that's fine if it's right or left, but what, what do we do if it's neither of those things? Well, in that case, if you think about it, right, if, if I'm facing up or down, my x isn't going to change at all, right? So in that case, if I'm not facing left or right, I can just return 0. And that's going to, so, uh, and, and now the error is going to go away. Uh, let's try this out, right? So if I say, um, let's, uh, um, let's get, get change x, right? So let's say we're facing um, 180, right? Then it's going to return, right? It's going to return negative 2. There we go, right? And if we do, um, if we do 
Say we're changing, facing negative 90, which is up. What's going to happen? It's going to return nothing, right? So now we, the y is going to work basically the same way, right? Uh, and so the y, what's going to happen with the y? It's basically going to do the same thing, except um, now, so we're doing this to get change y, right? And so we were turn so with y we're changing the y if we're facing up we're going to return a negative y so because remember as it if as uh, we move up y decreases if we're facing down we're going to return a positive y value right so uh, so returning a positive speed is going to be pointing down and returning a negative speed is going to be pointing up. And of course, this is what's going to happen if we're facing left or right, again, is not going to do anything. Um, and so let's just check this one out and make sure it works like it's supposed to. So if we're facing negative 90, which would be up, then we're returning a negative 2. And if we're re doing a positive 90, which is down, we're going to get a negative, or we're going to get a positive two. And if we're facing, say, zero, which is right, we're going to get a zero back. There we go. Great. So now I'm going to make all, the, all these methods private because really we don't really need to call them from outside the right private. You might be wondering who really cares, right? It's not like somebody's going to come in from outside on the internet and call my method uh, without me asking. That's true. So the idea in Java is that nothing, sh everything should be as private as you can get away with it being, right? Um, because uh, one way to think of a, of a of a class or an object is like a machine, right? There's a lot of things that happen inside your computer that you don't really want to be paying attention to, right? That you don't really want to know. It's things your computers can do, but you're not personally controlling yourself, right? So uh, this is kind of like a machine that's got stuff inside it that does stuff that you don't have to care why or how it's happening, right? So, all right, so now uh, where our change x, so our uh, change x is we're going to get change x and we need to know which direction we're going so uh, we can oh and we have so we have the direction up here and then we're going to do the y is get change y right so now it's still not quite going to work right well let's leave this public for just a little bit longer so we can see though right um, here what's going to happen right that if I um, do move player it's going to move me to the right a little bit right so say I'm pointing up and I do move player so I just found a problem and I think what I'm going to do rather than uh, what I'm going to do rather than start over I'm going to uh, take this as an opportunity to show you something useful which is the debugger so let me tell you what the problem is um, notice how when I move player and I'm pointing up it's not working right if I'm pointing down and I do uh, move player it's going to move me down a little bit if I'm pointing uh, left and I do move player it's going to point me left move me left a little bit which is what's supposed to happen but when I'm pointing up and I do move player, uh, it doesn't work. And uh, what happened? So this is a good opportunity to show you something useful, which is the debugger. So I'm going to show you the debugger right now. So what we want to do, um, basically what we want to do is we want to know what, what's what's happening. Uh, our change x isn't what it's supposed to be. Our change x, our change y isn't what it's supposed to be. Our change y isn't working. So let's just check and make sure. So I'm going to click right here. And this is going to, see this little stop sign that's going to create a break point. This is going to show me, uh, going to stop my code and allow me to see what's going on at a given moment. So let's just take a look here, right? Um, so I'm going to try and do this, and I'm going to call the move player and watch what happens. So notice how it goes here, and it stops, and it tells me what my variables are. And my change y is supposed to be negative 2. It's supposed to be moving up by 2, and it's not doing that. In fact, it's, it's, it's 0. So what's going on? 
Well, so if I, um, I'm going to stop this now, and I'll see, okay, so let's set another breakpoint. What happens here? Well, my direction at this point is supposed to be, when I run this, my direction is supposed to be, uh, uh, it's, it's supposed to be uh, negative 90. That's what I'm looking for, right? Direction down is negative 90. And so uh, let's try that. I'll get rid of this breakpoint. Let's see what happens here. So let's run it and say we're moving up. And then I'm going to um, call the move player again. And so if I look here, oh, wait a minute. I see the problem. Notice my direction is 270. That's what it gets me when it does my get rotation. But here I had up to be negative 90, which was fine when I was just setting the direction. But 270 is not equal to negative 90. Now, if you know any math, you'll know that uh, in uh, rotational terms, 270 and negative 90 are exactly the same thing. But the, the Greenfoot doesn't know that. Greenfoot just sees two numbers. It's like, this is 270, that's negative 90. Those are not the same thing. So it's not going to work. But that's okay, so that's fine. Uh, all I can do is I can just change this to 270, which means the same thing to our purposes, right? I can make this 270. And now, if I compile this now, my uh, thing should work. And if I run it, it will move me up just like it's supposed to. And so now it works. So now all I have to do, so now I just have to call the move player in each. And so now what's happening is it's going to set my direction and then it's going to call the move player method here. So um, if I run it, there we go. Move up, down, left, and right. Now again, I'll just recap what you're probably thinking, which is, hey Jim, this is a lot of more trouble to get back to right where we were after like lesson two. And it will all pay off in the next lesson when I put in an obstacle that's actually going to prevent us from moving through it, which would not have been possible if we just used the regular move method. But with our roll your own move method that we created, it's going to be able to, uh, we're going to be able to create an obstacle that actually blocks our path.